Hi everyone. In this bite-sized bit, we're going to continue our discussion of user-defined classes, and we're going to keep developing our product maintenance project by working on our new product form. Let's go ahead and get started. In our last video, we created our first user-defined class product, and that class has three different properties, dot .code, dot .description, and dot .price and a get display text method that either receives a separator or doesn't. And then we created our product maintenance form, which has a list box that displays the various products we currently have available and has some buttons that we did not yet program. And we're going to be coming back to those eventually. But for today, let's program our new product form. The new product form will allow a user to enter a code a description, and a price, and then save that information. Let's begin programming for this form by setting up a few things behind the scenes. If I click on my View Code button, I haven't created any code yet. Let's change that. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create an object which is instantiated upon the product class, and the name of this object is going to be New Product, and it's going to start empty or null. This is where we're eventually going to store the information that the user provides to us in the various text boxes as a new product. The next thing I'm going to do is create a method, which is public, that has a return type product and has a name get new product. We're going to use this method to display this form as a dialog you can see show dialog as a method that we're going to call. And then after the form is done, we're going to return the results of the new product object to the return type for this method and send it back wherever this method was called. Now you can see that I have an error right now, and that's because in the previous video, I made a small mistake in terms of creating our product class, and I need to fix that. If you double click on your product class over in the Solution Explorer, when I created our class for product, I forgot to type the word public, and I need to do that, and then I need to save my work. And if you come back to your new product form, you'll now see that the error has gone away. My apologies for that mistake. Let's go ahead and create the code for the save and cancel buttons. I'll tackle the cancel button first. It's very simple. The cancel button is going to close our form. Then I'll tackle our save button. The save button is going to fill in the details for our new product object. So you can see that I set new product equal to a new version of the product class. And I'm filling in the code property with the text from our TXT code, description from the text from our TXT description, and the price from the text of our TXT price text box, but converted to a decimal value. And then I close the form. That's all we're going to do for the new product form for now. So you can go ahead and save your work and return to the product maintenance form. We're ready to tackle the add product button. I'm going to double click and fill in the appropriate code. Let's walk through what happens when the user clicks on the add product button. The first thing that I'm going to do is instantiate a new product form based upon the new product class. The second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to call a method from that new object. So new product form dot get new product is causing the get new product method, which is part of that new form to run. And if you recall that get new product method does a couple things. Let's go take a quick look at it again. Get new product inside our new product form shows the form itself as a dialog box. And then when the form is finished, it answers the question of what product was filled in with the results that are inside the new product object. And that is why when we call that get new product method, from our new form, we send its results to an object called new product inside our product maintenance form, which receives that information. 
So in this case, the new product on our product maintenance form will be filled in with the information that was inside our new product on our new product form. We're basically getting the dot code and the dot description and the dot price from one form to another. Next, we ask an if question. We check to see if the new product actually was filled in. As long as it's not null, we're gonna do two things. We're gonna add that new product to our list of products. That's the list that we're storing in our code. And then we're going to fill our product list box again. That's the list of products that we're displaying on our form, where we're gonna clear the list box and then populate it with the information from our list. Let's try this out. I'm running my program and I'm clicking on the add product button. The add product button calls the get new product method inside our new product form, which causes this form to show up as a dialog box. You'll notice if I try to click away from it, I'm not allowed to do so because it has taken control of my program. I have to fill in three things. I have to fill in a code. I have to fill in a description and I have to fill in a price. I then can click on the save button. When I do so, a dot code, a dot description, and a dot price will be stored in our new product object on the new product form. And then that object's results will be sent to our product maintenance forms, new product object. And then that object will be added to our list behind the scenes. And finally, that new product will be added to our list box on our product maintenance form. Let's watch that work. We see our new product show up on our form. And if we used breakpoint analysis, we would see all of the mechanics behind the scenes, moving the data from place to place and storing the information in the appropriate locations. And I strongly recommend you do so. Let's wrap up with the code for our delete product button. The first thing I'm gonna do is check to see which of the various products in our list box the user has selected. And I'm gonna store that in an integer variable called int delete product candidate index, which is a mouthful. If they haven't chosen anything, and there's nothing to delete. But if they've chosen one of the products on that list box, then I'm going to store that particular product in a product object called delete product candidate. I'm getting it from my list of products based upon a particular location on that list, which coincides with the position on my list box on my form. The list and the list box parallel each other. I then ask the user using a string message and a message box, and the results of that message box stored in a dialog result button, do you really want to delete this particular object? And the user can answer yes or no. If they answer yes, I'm going to remove that product from my list, which is where we're storing the information behind the scenes. And I can do that with either the remove or the remove at method. And then after I've removed that product from our list in our code, I'm going to refresh our product list box on our form so the user can see the result. Let's test this code as well. If you rerun the program, you'll see that everything has reverted back to our original data. If I click on one of the products and then click the delete product button, I'll be prompted. Do you want to delete that particular book? If I answer no, nothing happens. But if I click on delete product and answer yes, the product will disappear from our list box on our form, and it also disappeared from our list behind the scenes. In future videos, we are going to add validation and we're gonna add external storage. But that's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.